My name is Mark Arkakis, Barb Wilson and myself are uh, project managing project four of the uh, Wild Outways Initiative, uh, which is uh, looking at protecting plant and animal biodiversity in the Otways from Phytophthora dieback. Phytophthora dieback is the disease caused by the pathogen Phytophthora cinnamomy. It's listed as a key threatening process under the EPBC Act and has uh, uh, management programs at the national and, 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 and Victorian um, uh, uh, level. Um, I'd like you to consider this next uh, figure um, that I'm going to put up. Uh, I think most of us will remember two weeks ago that um, our recently um, uh, uh, installed Minister for the Environment uh, released the State of the Environment report, um, which was a big surprise to us. I, did, I don't keep across that that sort of politic, um, but uh, clearly that report was ready to go last year, but it was released a couple of weeks ago and had national press club coverage as well. This is one of the figures. Uh, figure three, consider this carefully. This is uh, the 10 uh, invasive species list listed as affecting the greatest number of EPBC listed threatened taxa in Australia. Uh, and we go through uh, a, a familiar uh, a group of, 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 of threats, black rats, feral cattle, blackberry, European red fox, lantana, feral coat, goat, feral cat, feral pig, then Phytophthora cinnamomi, and then European rabbit. Phytophthora cinnamomi is one of the big threats to biodiversity in Australia, and it's one of the huge challenges we all face. Uh, and uh, uh, it's one of the key programs that was identified by the federal government as being important in uh, delivering better biodiversity outcomes for uh, the, the Otway Ranges. Um, in this talk, uh, I'm going to give a brief but incomplete introduction to phytophthora diseases in natural ecosystems. I did that last time and I'll do it again. Uh, the wild Wild Otways Initiative uh, objectives um, uh, are those of on-ground management. Jess put it absolutely brilliantly when she talked about uh, how scientists are dovetailed and interconnected as proper uh, regional ecologists uh, with uh, the on-ground managers. Um, there is a research component in the Phytophthora program and a very strong training component within the, uh, 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 within, within the Phytophthora program of the Wild Otways Initiative. And I'll give some brief progress to date. This is very much a, uh, a management focused uh, program. Um, I'm just going to hide those thumbnails. I can see what I'm doing here. Uh, and that's where I'll probably uh, outline where we're, we're at in terms of our progress to date on this particular program. But I'll throw die back in the Otway Ranges. Uh, the dieback disease that you see with dying grass trees or isopogons or banksias, it's caused by uh, a water mould, Phytophthora cinnamomi. Phytophthora cinnamomi is not a fungus. A fungus is more closely related to a dog than it is to Phytophthora cinnamomi. They're a completely different group of organisms. Uh, water moulds are what we're dealing with, with the Phytophthoras. Phytophthoras are one of the hundred most invasive and destructive species on, for, for both biodiversity and agriculture on the planet. These pathogens live in the soil um, and Phytophthora in, in cinnamomi in particular moves through the soil and it attacks the roots and vascular tissue of host plants causing plant dieback, uh, yellowing of foliage and death. Some plants are really susceptible to disease grass trees, banksias, isopogons, apacris, I mean, our, our Victorian uh, floral emblem, uh, and, and really uh, unusual and rare species. Uh, uh, and one in particular, the EPBC listed Tallestelia is resident in the Otway Ranges. And if you get a chance to go and have a look at wildlife wonders, I, uh, hopefully the translocations are still looking good, but the plants that that we saw there looked absolutely terrific and I'd never seen one in the wild. So seeing them uh, 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 like that was fantastic. So yeah, Tallestelia, very uh, susceptible uh, to, to infection and is killed by, by Phytophthora. I'd like you to consider this. Barb and myself worked in Western Australia for a number of years and we were quite shocked 
when uh, when the federal government listed Banksia communities as being uh, a, a threatened ecological community on the th on the Swan Coastal Plain, shocked in one way, uh, not shocked in another. We could see what was happening to that community, and we could see the impacts of clearing, uh, mining, and the impacts of Phytophthora, and why that that community was uh, was so threatened. I think Barb would probably. Uh, lead and probably be uh, in agreement with, with myself in saying that with our work on Phytophthora, we can see a day when grass, grass tree communities will be a threatened community in Australia because of Phytophthora. It's that, it's that devastating a disease. And the disease is favoured by warmer, moist soils. We're going into another La Nina. We'll see where that takes us. Uh, but warm, moist soils favour the disease. Look, it can be moved by other vectors, but honestly, this disease is moved by people. More than 90% of, of movements from one site to another are really people. Yes, a pig can move it, but I tell you what, a pig hunter can move it a lot further and a lot faster. It's, it's really a disease of people and we've got to take that responsibility and manage that responsibility to keep what we've got less. And really, um, this is what we're, we're really aiming to do within the Wild Outlays project. We've got this EPBC Act listed threatening process. Here we have some grass trees at Umarella that have been killed by Phytophthora. We've got healthy, healthy grass trees in the background. Um, and that's the dieback front marching on its way through. We've got a national threat abatement plan that gives us really clear guidance on what our actions should be. And this is the approach that the Wild Otways Initiative have taken with a lot of leadership from both um, Parks Victoria uh, and DELP, Forest Fire Management Victoria, because they're the key land managers. They're the ones who are observing the disease and they're the ones who have to manoeuvre and manage and make decisions about how we go about dealing with it. Um, Wild Otway's objectives are divided into those themes of management to reduce the impact of plant pathogen Phytophthora cinnamomy on the biodiversity of Otway's. Um, this uh, we'll, uh, I'll briefly talk about how we've gone through the uh, identification of the PPA, Priority Protection Area Process, Development of Management Interventions within PPAs, uh, and talk about the application of phosphite, <clears throat> which is the only direct uh, uh, management intervention we've got that can halt the progress of the disease. Doesn't kill it, just halts the progress. Uh, we have strong collaboration with Deakin University in Geelong uh, in terms of research uh, to understand better uh, protection of critical habitat and refuges in the Otways. Uh, we've got definitely a, a really strong training component that we've, we've implemented now and are rolling out to improve land manager and community awareness of the pathogen and really promote best practice. Um, and as part of the uh, monitoring and evaluation management effectiveness uh, uh, aspects of the project, we work uh, primarily with, with DELP Forest Fire Management within their, their MER program and make sure that any of the data that we're capturing is going to be clear, uh, easily integrated into their decision making, but also being able to make it uh, available and useful for the integrated monitoring framework. The National Threat Abatement Program states quite, quite clearly at the beginning, uh, work out which areas are really, really important. You can't manage the entire country for Phytophthora, but there are areas that become a focus for a number of reasons. Do they have lots of protected species? Is this a large area of intact habitat? All those sorts of questions were put to land managers at workshops. This was managed by Uni of Melbourne. Um, Terry Walsh uh, did a fantastic job. And the outcome was to identify a number of areas within the Otway Ranges that are our priority protection areas. These should be the areas of focused management because these are the areas that we know have really good stuff in them. And in the east, eastern Otways, this includes the Salt Creek Complex and the Bald Hills, Porcupine Creek Reference Area, which I think many of us wouldn't have much familiarity with, but it's in between Jellybrand and Forest. The Carlisle Heath, uh, uh, a huge, a beautiful area that's at huge risk of degradation. Uh, the area between Egan's uh, uh, track to Mount Mackenzie and then Devondale, 
And then we have one species focused uh, priority protection area, and that's for populations of tall astelia, which actually occur in the wet forest rather than in the, the heathland country, which is where we seem to see most of our threats. And in fact, I'm not sure if you can see my cursor, but there's an arc of red that runs across this figure um, of the Otways uh, that shows the areas that are extreme risk of, of Phytophthora infect, infestation and degradation. And yellow areas are very high risk. And in fact, that's the areas where our priority protection areas uh, were identified from, uh, from lower Gellibrand around Devondale up through to uh, Mount Mackenzie, Carlisle Heath in the centre here, the Porcupine area, reference area, and then we move right across to the Bald Hills Salt Creek area, closer to the, uh, in the eastern Otways. And to give you an example of, of what these reference areas look like in terms of our mapping, the yellow area outlines what, where the, the PPA boundary is, and we can actually see um, that most of them tend to be dominated by these heathland EVCs. Lots of grass tree groves, lots of species that are associated with those grass tree groves. And Jess put it brilliantly, once we lose those, we lose those fauna. And these are EPBC listed species such as Swamp Anticarnus, Potteroos are going to be at high risk if we lose these groves. Uh, this is the, uh, going to the other end, this is, shows the uh, Salt Creek uh, complex and Bald Hills in the Eastern Otways, PPA 6. Um, some of you will recognise uh, Anglesey uh, down in the lower right corner of this. So this is inland from, from uh, Aries Inlet and from Anglesey above the, uh, the, the, uh, the now decommissioned Alcoa brown coal mine. Phosphide application. Phytotoxicity trials we've carried out as part of this in collaboration with Deakin. And we understand now pretty clearly that um, application of phosphite as a means to control the spread of the disease is, uh, is, is, is safe. The uh, uh, trials have been conducted at very high rates of phosphite application. Uh, we've measured no short-term impact of off-label application uh, in these trials. And this just reflects what's, what's happened in Western Australia for 25 years of treatment. So in WA, they haven't seen any adverse effects of phosphite in 25 years of treatment in natural uh, vegetation. And we've also got to remember that phosphite, um, uh, what many people don't realise is applied agriculturally uh, all around Australia to avocados, to, to pastures, uh, to a whole range of, of crops and even roses. At the moment, um, we're waiting to roll out our broader scale applications of phosphite. Uh, that's pending on federal government approval. Um, this can be a really challenging part. Uh, Jess talked about the, the, the value of having the, the state government land managers on board, and it's been really fantastic. Uh, currently, our wait time for uh, approval at a national level is hitting 210 days. Uh, that can be really difficult when you're in, uh, I guess, a short term uh, funding cycle and you need to get things happening quickly. We're really confident that's coming through within the next couple of weeks. And then we will actually see some uh, wider applications uh, being undertaken in the Otways, particularly Carlisle and the Eastern Otways. Research is being led uh, really by our PhD student, uh, Campbell Leomont, uh, uh, with uh, Dave Kale, Jim Rooks, Barb Wilson, and our colleague from Western Australia, Sarah Barrett. Um, uh, Campbell's taken this in a really good direction, the epidemiology of Phytophthora dieback disease in the Otways, the where, the when, the, the how, uh, he hasn't started this next one yet, but Dave and himself certainly come from a, a pretty high base in terms of rapid diagnosis and in-field testing, um, controlling the, the rate of spread. And as fact, uh, it's Campbell's phytotoxicity work that, that coupled with the historical work done by Barb and, uh, and, and, um, and uh, Scotty Laidlaw and, uh, and others that we have been able to, to establish uh, that work. Um, and one... Uh, one aspect which is going to be really interesting and for us to watch 
I don't know if Campbell's on board, but we're all going to be watching this, Campbell, which is the first rehabilitation trial, uh, which uh, has its infield planting to be commenced in mid-August. And that is one that we're all looking forward to, to seeing how that rolls out, uh, not only in Victoria, uh, but all around Australia. There is now a lot of interest in this rehabilitation trial. Training, uh, to me, uh, is probably the most important part of what I do. Uh, um, and it's really just uh, an old bloke sharing his experiences about trying to become mindful. Uh, and working with Jess on this and Barb has been really rewarding. We've got a lot of interest from very enthusiastic land managers in PV and DELP. Uh, to have worked with these, these people in the field has given me a lot of um, encouragement and enthusiasm because otherwise you can get a bit grim. Uh, but when young people are going, right, we're going to, we, we now see what's going on. We're going to just modify what we do a little bit and think about it. Uh, that is very, very rewarding. And we've had great in-field training sessions with uh, FFM Vic and Parks Vic and the CCMA uh, in the Central and East Knotways. We've got upcoming training, which is really interesting, uh, both for FFM Vic, uh, but also the CFA. Uh, and I'm looking, really looking forward to that. But we've also had a lot of interest coming from uh, uh, community groups and our plan is to, to focus on community groups in the last part of the Wild Otways initiative. Uh, particularly, we've got a lot of interest coming in from Angare and the Eastern Otways uh, land care. Um, and we've also got training being captured within the videography uh, project that, that's being managed by uh, Tony and Jess at the CCMA. And that's where I'm going to uh, uh, call a, a stop to my uh, to, to my presentation of, of really a, a, of our progress to date. Um, not sure how we're going to sit with questions, Jack, but more than happy to uh, to uh, talk about anything if we have any time. Uh, we do have a few minutes. We don't have any questions um, at the moment. You've right. got one, Jack, yeah. I'm sure, mate. I, I do have one, but I'll just throw it out. So if you can type quickly enough, I'll give you a few seconds to, to type them if people have questions. Well, I mean, you you know that when you talk about 5 top 3, you depress me. But um, where, <laughs> where where do you see the biggest wins? I, like, I mean, I, I know, you know, the, the training has been wonderful and the progress that this project has allowed us to make in terms of awareness has been um, monumental. But where do you see the biggest wins, Mark, in the future? Aerial application, cost-effective aerial application. Let's just assume that as humans, we're, in the end, we'll get COVID. <laughs> that means we drop the ball. And I, I see no evidence that we can maintain the, the extreme levels of uh, mindfulness and management that we need to implement at every step. And uh, in my opinion, cost-effective aerial application will buy us time until the geneticists really get rolling on this. Some of the genetics work shows how difficult this disease is. Uh, they don't, for instance, uh, it'd be great to hear some of them, They're, most of them are working in agriculture, but uh, this pathogen has six nuclei, each of them shifting and doing slightly different things. So thinking about uh, genetic controls and CRISPR, it, whole new technologies we, are, we have to wait for. And to do that, we must buy time. Phosphite's the only thing we've got, Jack. Yep. Uh, well, um, here's to hoping we can, uh, we can buy that time. <laughs> Mate, got to, got to keep throwing punches, Jack. Yeah, that's what we do. Um, you're off the hook, my friend. There are no questions there. If they do pop up, um, Mark has access to the Q&A section and can answer them offline. Um, well, there's one that's just turned up now, Mark. If you uh, Mountain bike tracks, both legal and illegal, seem to be proliferating across Victoria. What is the effect they have in spreading phytophthora? I know you spent a bit of time thinking about this, mate. Uh, bad. Yeah, no, no. Um, the, the outcome, I just can't slice or dice it. Um, illegal bike tracks seem to want to go through grass tracks. Uh, I think that's because from a landscape point of view, it's something that they can do. Uh, we've seen the spread of disease into uh, unaffected areas by illegal uh, bike tracks. And currently under the EPBC, 
um, the, uh, the footprint of a new bike track is really limited uh, on first um, cut of EIA, Environmental Impact Assessment, to the footprint of the track itself. And uh, I can't see a mechanism where the synergistic effect of, of, of uh, several threatening processes operating outside of the direct footprint uh, are being accounted for in EIA. But let me say to anyone who's really keen about bike tracks and promoting them, make sure it goes through an EPBC as well as a state environmental impact assessment. We'll come to an agreement, we'll come to a better managed uh, outcome rather than just relying on managing illegal bike tracks. The EIA is there for a reason and you can get good results. Great. Thanks, Mark. Uh, there are a few more questions, but if you could maybe have a go at um, answering them offline, Mark, in the in the Q and A section, that'd be great.